morning. Our good friend Mondays is back again. So um, it's uh, Monday, October the 5th. And so today, welcome to the Morning Watch. We're going to be talking about um, and reading together 1 Corinthians chapter 14 today. A pretty large chapter. So we'll go ahead and open up with a word of prayer and then we'll get going. I hope you're well. Um, hope you slept well. Hope you don't have too busy of a week ahead of you. Um, I've got a dentist appointment this morning, so, but that's always not, it's never, never too off the bat. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer and then we'll get started. Lord, thank you for this day. I pray, Lord, that we, as we study your word, that you would just make it clear to us the things out of it that you want us to get out of it, that you would speak to us through your word, and that you would um, be with us, Lord, today in everything that we encounter, that we would be sought and light in this world. Lord, we love you and we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> all right. So good morning, Bill and Vicki and Peggy and my sister is here. All right. So today we're going to be in, like I said, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And I'll be honest with you, this is a, this is a tough chapter to read. Um, there's some things in here that are kind of tough to reconcile, um, but Hopefully we can get some clarity around those today. So let's read it together. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. Pursue love, yet desire earnestly spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands. But in his spirit he speaks mysteries. But one who prophesies speaks to men for edification and exhortation and consolation. One who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but one who prophesies edifies the church. Now I wish that you all spoke in tongues, but even more that you would prophesy. And greater is one who prophesies than one who speaks in tongues, unless he interprets, so that the church may receive edifying. But now, brethren, if I come to you speaking in tongues, what will I profit you unless I speak to you either by way of revelation or of knowledge or of prophecy or of teaching? Yet even lifeless things, either flute or harp, in producing a sound, if they do not produce a distinction in the tones, how will it be known what is played on the flute or on the harp? For if the bugle produces an indistinct sound, who will prepare himself for battle? So also you, unless you utter by the tongue speech that is clear, how will it be known what is spoken? For you will be speaking into the air. There are perhaps a great many kinds of languages in the world, and no kind is without meaning. If then I do not know the meaning of the language, I will be to the one who speaks a barbarian, and the one who speaks will be a barbarian to me. So also you, since you are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek to abound for the edification of the church. Therefore let one who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. For I pray, if, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What is the outcome then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the mind also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the mind also. Otherwise, if you bless in the Spirit only, how will the one who fills the place of the ungifted say the Amen at your giving of thanks, since he does not know what you are saying? For you are giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not edified. I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. However, in the church I desire to speak five words with my mind, so that I may instruct others also, rather than ten thousand words in a tongue. Brethren, do not be children in your thinking, yet in evil be infants, but in your thinking be mature. In the law it is written, By men of strange tongues and by the lips of strangers I will speak to this people, and even so they will not listen to me, says the Lord. So then tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophecy is for a sign, not to unbelievers, but to those who believe. Therefore, if the whole church assembles together and all speak in tongues, and ungifted men or unbelievers enter, will they not say that you are mad? But if all prophecy and an unbeliever or an ungifted man enters, he is convicted by all, he is called to account by all. The secrets of his heart are disclosed, and so he will fall on his face and worship God, declaring that God is certainly among you. What is the outcome then, brethren? When you assemble, each one has a psalm, has a teaching, has a revelation, has a tongue, has an interpretation. Let all things, that all things be done for edification. If anyone speaks in a tongue, 
It should be by two or at the most three, and each in turn, and one must interpret. But if there is no interpreter, he must keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Let two or three prophets speak, and let the others pass judgment. But if a revelation is made to another who is seated, the first one must keep, must keep silent. For you can all prophesy one by one, so that, you, so that all may learn and may be exhorted, and the spirits of prophets are subject to prophets. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. The women are to keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but are subject to themselves, just as the law also says. If you desire to learn anything, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it is improper for a woman to speak in church. Was it from you that a word of God first went forth, or has it come to you only? If anyone thinks he is a prophet or spiritual, let him recognize that the things which I write to you are of the Lord's commandment. But if anyone does not recognize this, he is not recognized. Therefore, my brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy, and do not forbid to speak in tongues. But all things must be done properly and in an orderly manner. All right. So, there's a few things in here that jump off the page. Number one, if, if we're going to do a Bible study, and we're not going to skip any chapters we have to we're compelled if we want to be faithful to the scripture to uh, discuss chapters that may have some things in it that we don't maybe that kind of uh, we don't understand or that are difficult this one is certainly tough to wrap our heads around um, Paul let's talk about these verses that talk about women not speaking in church let's let's hit that one first um, Paul is dealing with with some issues here in this church in Corinth, okay? So one of the things that we don't have is that we don't have all of of the context, right? So we don't have all of that. So we're a little bit blind, a little bit. Um, they're probably, in, in this discussion that Paul makes about the role of women in the church, there is more than likely he is pointing to a law or a tradition in this region. So there were definitely some cultural implications. But when you look at, because this looks like that women are to really to say nothing in church, to uh, be completely silent in church. There, If you read a lot of the commentaries at play that talk about this particular chapter, they will say this, there must have been an issue within this church where in this place, a group of here women were, were causing trouble. Because if you look at the entire canon of scripture, okay, you can't just look at this particular verse in isolation because you take it out of context. If Because you look at all of our scripture, there are Example after example after example of women who actively ministered inside of the church. So that's why this particular ver these particular verses here seem to be out of out of place. Um, but again, Paul is very specifically teaching to the church in Corinth. Women obviously have a role in the church, and. Um, there are people, though, that look at this and they'll say, oh, so women are to be completely silent in church. Well, I don't think that holds up when you look at the entirety of Scripture, okay? Uh, many of us would not have come to the Lord had it not been for women in the church who, who ministered to us and helped us and served us. In fact, in the modern church, the women um, have really carried most of the water, um, you know, just to be frank with you. And have done more work than the men have. So that doesn't really, we've got to take it for what it says. However, we've got to also look to see what is the greater, what is the greater, the entirety of God's word have to say about women being involved in church. There's example after, think about Priscilla and Aquila, who were um, friends of Paul, who had supported his ministry. Priscilla was very active in the church. Uh, there in Rome, and so it doesn't really, it doesn't really, it doesn't really add up. Um, so, the balance of Scripture for sure. All right. So, so when you look at the biggest issue that Paul talks about throughout the entire chapter 
is he's continuing to talk about having spiritual gifts. Now, what have we talked about over the last few days? Every single believer has a spiritual gift. And here, Paul is specifically talking about two of those, speaking in tongues and prophecy. Now, Paul himself said that he spoke in tongues quite often, we can assume. But he also talks about that prophecy is preferred over the speaking in tongues because of the great value that prophecy had for the building up of the church. Okay. Paul also tells us that we should, here in this chapter, that we should seek after growing these gifts whichever one would do the greatest good in building up the body of Christ. And so it's it's asking God, you know, you, if we want to know, well, how do I start? How do I do this? How do I develop my spiritual giftedness? Like everything, it should begin with calling upon the Lord to let him assist you in uh, in building up that within you. God will do the work within your life. So, Paul specifically here talking, he gives some sort of ground rules to speaking in tongues. He gives us some details here around prophecy. But the bottom line, any of these gift, any of these gifts that point the honor and the glory to us, those are dangerous. The gifts, including prophecy and speaking in tongues, that point others to Jesus and build up the kingdom of God, build up the local church, then it's healthy, okay? Um, our pastor, our interim pastor yesterday, he was talking about the gifts of, he was talking about what good, healthy churches do. And one of those is to serve, okay? That we should, as a, as a local church, we should be defined by our ability to serve each other, serve our community, etc. He says he said something that really stuck with me. He said, when you start looking at a particular thing that you're doing or thinking about doing, ask yourself the question, in that service, who is in the spotlight? If it's us, then it doesn't pass the test. But if it's the Lord and his ways, then it's good. And that's something I never want this Bible study to become. Um, as, and that really convicted me. I don't I won't ever want our time in God's Word to become a, um, a thing that in any way lifts me up or casts a light on me. That's not, that's, not my, that's not my goal. But it's the same thing with spiritual giftedness. Um, if the giftedness shines a lot on us and our abilities, then it's not, it's not good. But if it shines a lot on Jesus, then it's great. So, I love you all. There's Cookie and Juanette, Kim Amon, there's my sister, my mom, Glenna Cordell, Kim Smith, Lorene is here, Peggy's still here, Bill and Vicki. Well, I love you all. It's about 7.15, so we'll get started with our Monday. Have a blessed, blessed Monday. Let's have a word of prayer together, and then we'll be about our way. Um, uh, so 1 Corinthians 15 tomorrow. So got a couple more days left. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for all your goodness. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for us. Thank you for your word. Lord, I just pray that you would help us to understand the things from it that you would have us to understand. And that, Lord, that we would, um, the beautiful thing, Lord, about your scripture is that we can chew on it and meditate on it all day long. And Lord, we want to be more like your son, Jesus. Lord, we love you. And we ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. I love you all. Have a great Monday. And we'll see you tomorrow.